Hey YouTube, welcome back to episode 5 of my uh, firewood processor build. In this episode we're working on the log clamp. Get the engine mounted up, hydraulic tank mounted up, and teeth on the infeed table. Uh, this is cutting the keyway for the rear infeed shaft. I actually did that last video but left it out add it into this one uh, the infeed sprockets are from red boar chain and sprocket I think this is their name uh, they have a huge selection of stuff like that uh, their sprocket comes with a hub you have to weld on so I was welding the hub on uh, here I'm working out for the log clamp The holes I drilled for the bearings were 7 16 The slots in them were half inch, so I figured that'd give me a little room for adjustment. The only problem with that is I only found four bolts in my whole stash that were 7 16 so I gotta order hardware for them. More C channel. I have plenty of it laying around, so I'm welding some plates in and drill a hole through there for my pivot point axle, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is a spacer a cut. I had one on each side that I welded in after I welded the shafts. That way the spacer would contact the edge of the bearings and keep any side play down. Since I started thinking about building a firewood processor, the hourglass rollers is one of the things I thought about a lot. So I decided to make one at least for the log clamp. That way, it, if I ran the end feed with the log clamp down, it would likely let the log move instead of bending anything or messing anything up. So I had these basically pulleys that cables went through or around steel cables 
that had bearings in them, so I figured that was a good foundation for building a roller. I started trying to cut them with the bandsaw, but I was having issues. I think the blade was bent, so I ended up plaza cutting them all out. Uh, here I'm just cutting the ends for each at each end of the roller. Uh, couldn't get to drill with the mill, so I ended up putting in the lathe, drilled the holes in the middle, and then just turned the outside to the right diameter. I uh, cut the shaft down the length after I had the other side welded in. Uh, I think it was about 16 inches, and then between my end pieces is 14 inches. So the width of the roller is basically 14 inches. I'm just tracing out some brackets to reinforce these rings and then I plasma cut it plasma cut them out and welded them in I cut all the triangular pieces so that they were all the right diameter for the end pieces. Since I cut them out with the plasma, they were some of them were kind of all over the place. I ground down one of the bearings so that it would basically just slide right in that way because once I welded this piece in there was really no getting the bearing back out so if the bearings ever fail well, it's gonna be replace the entire part likely
Here's an unboxing video. The engine's been sitting for four months. I bought it back in May, and it's now September. So four months the engine's been sitting in the box. So luckily it wasn't just full of bricks. It actually was an engine in there. Took the front covers off the engine to install the PTO shaft kit, front PTO shaft kit. Uh, I think it's Performance 670 is who sells that. That's who I got this kit from. And this is where off the front of the engine I'll run the chainsaw pulley. I'm just trying to line up to figure out where the engine has to be mounted. Uh, added some pieces in where I can bolt the engine. Here comes a lesson in wearing safety glasses, even though you're pretty far away from your work. Luckily that didn't hit me in the eye, it just hit me in the face, but it was hot and stuck to my skin. I was working on lining this up. I realized that that thick spot in between the two grooves does not match up with my drive pulley on my chainsaw bar or on the chainsaw shaft. So I'm gonna have to get two single pulleys and figure out a way to make them work so that the gaps are right. Uh, here I'm just welding in. I end up welding three of these braces. In basically to help hold the plows up plus it'll keep a log from rolling up over that side I'm trying to figure out this bracket this is for the tank it was off a crane it was on the back of a truck uh, it's been sitting for many years but Surprisingly, everything is in good shape. Even the inside of the tank, the tank was kept full, so the inside of the tank's perfect. Uh, I think the tank, I think I calculated out to be 40 gallons. Uh, which is probably way more than I need, but it'll definitely help keep temperatures down.
This filter is not one assembly. So the infeed teeth I made out of some, I think it was inch by quarter inch. And I just cut basically little triangles out. And then I'm gonna weld these onto these brackets. So it was 40 of them all together. Now this is the sh drive shaft for the other end. I never put the uh, never put the keyway in that one, so I had to cut that one. That way I could roll the chain around as I welded each tooth or each set of teeth on. Uh, that's the drive sprocket. I don't remember the tooth count, but uh, this is from Red Boar as well. Uh, they were one of the few places I got fine that had a drive sprocket for an inch and three quarter shaft. I do have 40 of these teeth on. Uh, one thing I did find while I was rolling this chain around is the welds were a little too thick for my clearances on the the 2x2 two two square tubing so I ground some of the welds down to make clearance so hopefully that doesn't cause me any issues uh, that's the end of this one it's a short video uh, the next one will be mounting up all the hydraulic controls uh, I haven't ordered all my cylinders yet i did decide the chainsaw is going to be hydraulic down feed i did a bunch of research on that so hopefully that'll work out so uh make sure you subscribe that way you'll know when the next video comes out getting close closer there's still a lot of stuff to do but hopefully it won't be too much longer i'm hoping to be done with it in sometime in october uh about mid-September now, so hopefully sometime in October. So, catch you next time.